behind the scenes of Manchester's tactical vehicle crime unit, X-Cars. The unmarked police car taking this video is from Manchester's X department. It's been following the BMW for five minutes at speeds of over 110 miles an hour. The driver doesn't seem to have noticed that he's being followed, or that his car appears to have lost one of its tyres. The car is also being tracked by the police helicopter with its heat seeking camera. We're not stopping him because of the danger. He's going to burst into flames, are on to the 61. 5987 CK, we can see a motorway patrol behind us, approximately half a mile between us. Stand by, stand by, vehicle's gone over the centre reservation. Vehicle slowing down, vehicle now on hard shoulder at speed, 30 miles an hour, motorway patrol. The reason for this remarkable piece of driving becomes clear when the car eventually stops. The driver has drunk two and a half times the legal limit of alcohol. He's given an eight-month suspended prison sentence, disqualified from driving for four years, and fined over four thousand pounds. X Department's unique undercover unit was set up to combat Manchester's car crime. The team of 36 officers are specialists in high-speed pursuits. Tonight, Phil Seeley and his partner Steve Lewis are setting up Operation Columbus, a one-night blitz on joyriders. Manchester has a big problem with car theft. Last year there were 95,000 car-related crimes in the city. That's one every five minutes. 25 cars stolen today. That's still outstanding now. Is that from when? Yeah, no, the last 24 hours and they're all still outstanding stolen. Johnny, give me a tip there. We're having a brief no, seven o'clock in an hour's time and we're going to the areas where we think the majority of these cars will be. So we're going over there shortly and working through till 4 a.m. Um, four double man cars and two single man cars are going to the area, as well as divisional personal and traffic cars. Working undercover, driving powerful unmarked cars, the team police the 400 square miles of the city. They know every back street, escape route and hiding place used by the car thieves. It's happening in the areas that we're targeting tonight. I'll give you all allocated areas to sort of to concentrate in. Um, there's a pattern emerging that the criminals, when they're stealing the car, they're keeping the car normally for a night and they're dumping them. I've not highlighted dumping grounds because your map would just be pink, green, yellow and everything. The helicopter are aware of facts then that we're running the operation. If we get into pursuit, let's get the helicopter up as soon as. And then if we can, let's use the stinger and get the uh, pursuit stopped at an early stage before anybody's uh, put at risk. The main the point of the Stinger is to slow down stolen cars. It's uh, a bed of nails and you can throw that out across the carriageway and it'll open um, and it'll spread across the width of your average size uh, road. Each of the nails is very sharp and it's also hollow. If you actually look at an individual section like that, it's on a base which rocks as the car runs over it. It'll go straight into the tyre and it's normally within uh, 200, 300 yards. The tyre will in fact run flat and the car can't be driven any further. It's 7.30 and Operation Columbus gets underway. The idea really is, with four cars out tonight, is to put the feelers out really. It's like um, eight sets of eyes, if you want, in separate areas where we think it's going to happen. 
And if we are covert, then we maintain, obviously, the element of surprise. The element of surprise has proved vital in finding stolen cars in the past. They'll go out and have drinks, especially the younger ones. A couple of drinks, cans from the off-license and then something else to do. We'll go and get a car. So all of these kids stealing cars and driving around in them for three or four hours is their idea of a night out, so that's what they do on a Friday. It's Friday night. <laughs> A small minority of uh, these car thieves that know we exist, and know what we do, know what kind of cars that we drive, and they actually see it really as a, as a personal challenge. It's something to talk about with the friends if they if they manage to get away. Left onto Douglas Green again. That's a negative, 5987 still following down the back alleys. They'll take you somewhere where they've previously removed um, concrete posts and they know it's just wide enough to get a metro through or just wide enough to get a Peugeot through. And they'll take you down there, they'll drive through knowing full well that the car that you're driving um, is too wide to get through. This time the car got away. Yeah, we'll have a look at this one. Tonight, Phil and Steve have spotted three young lads in a powerful car. Their instincts tell them it's worth checking. In the previous set of traffic lights there, there was a, a white Sierra 4x4, which is a, a reasonably high powered vehicle with a few lads, young lads, in it. Um, and it just looked odd. So we'll just go and have a look. And there may be nothing in it, but we'll go and have a look. Because they're fairly young lads, and it's a reasonably high-powered car, um, and it's a Ford, the, the kind of car that may be stolen by young lads. Sierra 7763 CKPNC, please, Kingsway, East Didsbury. You do one of two things generally, people in stolen cars. They either drive too slowly and too deliberately, because they're being careful, or they drive recklessly. You can't legislate really for what they're going to do but it's a nice gear change mate. <laughs> lovely gear change we've obviously been behind him now a few lefts and rights and we've gone with him we had no we'll option to, to go with him we'll um, have to pull him in a minute and he quite clearly knows now that we're following him so we'll pull him in you do the check there we go one i'll do it it's a vehicle, please, on the Echo 769, oh, X-ray, Tango, Alpha, looking for a white Sierra 4x4. Is it your motor? Yeah, it is. Just register yourself, is it? What yeah. name is it, please? Colin Stevenson. Have you just live at the top there, I didn't know who you were. Right, yeah, no problem. Have you got any ID? Yeah, I've got a couple of bank cards here, mate, if you can just let me use the line. It just register yourself. What, what address do you live at? Yeah, 17 Poplar Road. <laughs> Where are you off to? Just going fishing in a minute. Are you? Yeah, we're going up to Macclesfield. What name? Stevenson. Yeah, right. Okay. The reason why we stopped you, obviously, lads. Nice car. Three yeah. young lads. So, okay. just a routine check. Have a nice night. Just a routine check, and he's quite happy with that. Um, this is pride and joy, his car, so he's quite happy to be stopped in the length of time it took. It only took three minutes for it to be sorted, so... He's paying £1,250 a year insurance, third party. Third party, that's it. Top car. Next job, we'll Hopefully. go on. Hopefully. Find a stolen car. <laughs> we'll get a stolen one. That's a general idea. <laughs> We're trying too hard, I think. Phil and Steve decide to change tactics and leave the back streets to 
keep watch on one of Greater Manchester's busiest roads. It's a good place to, to sit out of the way um, and just see what goes by. It's 11 o'clock and a stolen car is being pursued on the other side of the city. The registration is Echo 604 Sierra Whiskey Yankee, a Peugeot saloon. The traffic from the L division, we think, which is Wigan, are chasing a Peugeot 205 from West Horton towards Bolton, towards the K division. So we're going to try and make our way now and uh, assist with that. 100 yards from the island, it's heavy breaking. The police car behind the stolen Peugeot also has a video and is recording the pursuit for evidence. He hasn't got good control of the vehicle. Factory. Approaching the 30 mile an hour section, speeds now 60 miles an hour. in the stolen car turn out to be just 16 years old. Both cars involved in the crash were written off, although miraculously no one was seriously hurt. I just dumb me head down for one second. I need... You're coming home from, from Liverpool, I yeah, take it, to the game. Coming through yeah, here. Like it's actually part of the Silver car boy. straight in front of us that span off. Right, no that's idea. It. Just in a second. Just for, well, I don't even know what happened. All I know is we had it just bleeding roof and that was it. It's a stolen car, you're obviously aware of that, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I've no idea. I don't give a shit, so long as we're all right. That's the main yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah. That cars yeah. can be replaced or repaired. There could be six dead bodies now, couldn't there? We're not being funny looking at that, I'm looking at yeah. this. No, you're could quite right. There could be six dead bodies, yeah. Quite right. How did City go on? Oh, don't you mind. <laughs> We've had a bad day, is it? Is it? <laughs> the driver of the stolen car has since been banned from driving for 12 months, and both he and his accomplice have been given 100 hours community service. It's devastation. This is how the vast majority of these um, pursuits can and, and do end. That could have been you, me, yourself, anybody in that fiesta going home. Um, they don't care less. Not, not interested in the slices. The parents of the 16-year-old car thieves will have to pay £75 compensation to the innocent driver of the other car involved in the crash. It's now halfway through the night's operation. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Why games left. Why have you got it's not of interest? FA Cup semi. What's on the tilly? Like you lot. Yeah. 
What time is the kickoff? Midday? Yeah. I'll do that run. It's uh, Wilms or 11 o'clock. Okay, that's a sprint then, won't we? You're doing it, aren't you? Okay. I'll not run for 12 hours. Oh, I'll start that now. I'll get out and do something. Yeah. Confident I could finish it. I run three times a week. I'll only finish ten minutes ahead of you, won't I? Yeah, but you eat double what I eat. I eat what? Double what I eat. You are joking. Blutsky. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of food. Straight nine zero, I did just... Well, James, I'm three eight nine zero, six eight six six, a dog patrol. She was about to say she was at the airport under the... Well, you look at him there. There's not, nothing on him. He doesn't do any exercise that I know of. And he eats like a, a horse. Look at him. Drink this heavily. Body's a temple. <laughs> Body's a temple. Adonis, is it? Or was it Adidas? Phil and Steve pick up a radio message that car thieves have struck again, this time much closer to home. Go ahead. Yeah, vehicle found on Lunhill Street, Lima Alpha, Sierra, Sierra, Echo, Lima, Lima, Bolton Shore. Yeah, could you assist me again off which road it's off, please? Yes, I'd like to report that uh, one of our cars has been stolen from Garside Street in the city. It was actually sighted driving like a maniac with blue lights on. It's been found burnt out off of Lasselle La Street. I'm just trying to find out if it's off this road. If it's a maze. So if we can get another road name that we can find out where it is. It's burnt out there, we'll go and have a look at it now. He's taken it knowing it was a police car, they've not got into it and never found out it was a police car. He's seen it and thought, well, I'll have one over on the bobbies here. I can take the car, I can have a drive round in it for the afternoon, blue lights going, etc. And then set fire to it, which is exactly what he's done now. It's round here somewhere. There he goes. It's one of those. It's been in the garage, hasn't it? I bet they might have stripped it. Well wrecked, isn't it? That is a mess, isn't it? You can see why they do that, because it's a, it's a fast car. It's a nice looking car. But why do that? Why don't you park it up somewhere and leave it to be recovered? Why? How's that benefited him at all? Other than, right, you know, up yours, I've, I've done one on the police. They're sick people, really. It's... Oh. The main concern was the fact that that might have gone. That is, it might not look like it now, but that's um, passed from the VHF uh, radio set. It's still in the car, it can't be used, obviously, it's knackered now. Um, and the other concern was that, and that's what's left of uh, quite a modern uh, video system that's fitted to the car. So again, at least they've not got that. Although several people admitted they'd seen the car being driven around, so far no one has been able to help identify the driver. This wrecked police car brings the week's count of stolen cars in Manchester to 875. At midnight, Phil and Steve choose another observation point and turn on their in-car video system for the next piece of action. Where's Paul Lynch? Oh, he's into, isn't he? Dear me! It's like you on Sunday, that list. That's good, the winner. Yeah, yeah. He did, you controlled it, actually. <laughs> Nearby, another ex-department car is recording a pursuit. Coming off to the roundabout now, I think it's a bit Stamford Road standby. Just got a report that uh, our evening crew, the other lads that work opposite us at uh, Plant Hill, we're currently pursuing uh, an Montego estate that's been stolen from the Aston the Line area. It's making its way down Aston Hill Road towards one of our areas that we look at quite regular, open shore. Roger, we're staying on, and we're staying on towards Hotel uh, Reservoirs. Open shore? Yeah, a bit of luck. No way, Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. 
right towards us now. Okay, Phil, let's do it. <laughs> Stand up. Look at that. Ah. Yeah. Which is that van there? That's mine. Got a minute? Yeah, please. Come on, man. The 17 year old driver has since been given 100 hours community service, fined £245, and disqualified from driving for 12 months. His passenger, who escaped, is thought to be under 10 years old. It's not uncommon to find children as young as this driving stolen cars. As the night progresses, the number of cars reported stolen climbs. We've also heard recently that um, there's a red Fiesta stolen from the Cheadle area of, of Stockport. So that's another one, obviously, that um, we'll be paying some attention to. Hopefully it can turn up at some stage. But another car attracts their attention. And we turned left then into, I think it's Ashburton Road. A Ford Escort was pulling up at the lights. The lights stayed at red. It just did a right turn through the lights. It stopped momentarily, but then did a right turn. Colour number's 1744. Uh, it's a vehicle, please, on X-ray Kilo Romeo. 450 X-ray. See what you've got on here? You've got those plates that are supposed to... Uh, for gats on. They don't work. You know, these gats on cameras, the photographing when you go through red lights, or speed traps. It's supposed to just reflect all the light so that you can't read the number. Well, they don't work. I'm off details, vehicle show on a Ford Escort, gear, five door saloon in blue. Yeah, that's for safe, thanks very much. Right, to turning right, you were stationary on Mosley Road. Yeah. You turned right at some traffic lights. What set of lights? What can you tell me about those traffic lights? Oh, I'm right. Were they? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Jumped them. It's a miracle, so remember now which set of lights he's gone through on red. You say it is yours, yeah? Yeah. How long have you had it? Um, it's here information 4526, he's following this Fiesta onto uh, Greek Street. Can you raise Indy 99, please? Yeah, behind that stolen yeah, car. Yeah, Roger, Green Street, so which car is that over? It's not for South Centre, it's towards the motorway. Do you know how many is on board over? The following. Yeah, Roger, it's towards the motorway. Yeah, go ahead with the vehicle. Just stop at red lights, all right. Cheadle. Following that car. It's all in Cheadle. Put 47 on. Greek Street at Edgeley towards the motorway. It might come our way. King Street West towards the motorway. Quite our way. Straight down here now, uh, the A56 to so the M63. We got the M63 at junction 7. We'll, we'll just hit the motorway there for the stop point. 135. 135. If he pulls out, we're dead. With the helicopter tracking the pursuit, the stolen car's direction becomes clearer. Phil and Steve try to guess the stolen car's route. If they can get ahead of the car, they may be able to use the stinger to puncture its tyres and stop the pursuit. We're going to a left up here onto Nangreve Road. Yeah. If it does a left there, we're out here though. 3108 was now 60 mile an hour, Offerton Road. 
Mr. Mellon now, uh, off it's in road. Should we have left down here? At least if it... It does a left. Road now and get the stinger out. Uh, if we can stay ahead of it. Looks like a black and white striped shirt from my position. Yeah, Roger, white male. Marple, town centre, town centre, town centre, Marple Road. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, this right. is it, white isn't it? Give us the Sierra 1744 Seagate. Sierra 1744. Yeah, where is it now, please? We're currently Marple Road. Yeah, 310, Marple Road towards Offerton. Towards Offerton, 1744 to receive. Yeah, we're Marple Dress with a stinger. Phil, do it, do it, do it now. 30 seconds of you. Yeah, stinger. Yeah, Seattle 1744, stinger deployed. Yeah, the vehicle's been stung. Vehicle stung, get hold of us. Come on. He's well stunned. He's holding. Yeah, well, the tyres should deflate now and should, uh, the pursuit should come down a notch. So hopefully, we're in on flat shortly. Yeah, there he is. Done. Can't go 182 on the vehicle, don't want to rest it Yes! That is absolutely bob on. Uh, they just passed me, and I thought, no, it can't be, not on the A6, you know when he's been circulating for five minutes, you know. It's like your birthday. And, I spun, and they were miles ahead of me, I spun round, went after him, and they stood on the lights, so we parked up at the lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was doing speeds of uh, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour through a town centre. OK, it's, it's half past two, but there's still party goers, drunks, making their way home, minding their own business, crossing the road, and this lunatic's driving at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, and I suppose, really, it's good luck rather than good judgement that uh, he hasn't killed somebody. Um, but the plain truth is that they drive like that when they're not being pursued. It's a misconception to say, well, he wouldn't be driving like that had the police not been chasing him because it's not his car, it's not his petrol and he'll drive as he wants. Yeah. Well, at least we've got something, haven't we? Hey. All worthwhile. Kebabs up there now. <laughs> He's like that, come on! And I'm thinking, foot to the floor in the air. This. this has ended very well. Nothing's damaged, nobody's hurt and he's in custody. And he certainly can't kill anybody in the back of the van, which is where he is now. And that's the best place for him. The driver of the stolen car has since been disqualified from driving for three years and sentenced to 12 months in prison. There's more action with X-Cars at the same time of 8.30 next Monday night here on BBC One. One real.